Hello everyone, I'm Pawan. So I'm the class. I'm in the class of 2016. So at Dartmouth, I'm known as a 16. So it's not a fearful uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and 16. Now. Uh, so I'm a rising sophomore, uh, as soon as you mentioned. Uh, and I'm going to talk about my first year experience at Dartmouth College. Maybe get a bit to talk about how I maybe found myself or something like that. Uh, so Dartmouth begins with the first year trips. Everyone at Dartmouth, almost everyone at Dartmouth, uh, about 1,000 students out of 1,100, most of the times, uh, sign up for the first year trips. And the first year trips are all run by students, so they are run by upperclassmen. Everything is run by upperclassmen. And the first year trips includes activities like hiking, uh, biking. So for people who don't want to do a lot of hiking, cabin camping, nature riding, photography, right? so those kind of things. So everyone signs up for the first year trips. And when you land in college, the first thing you do is uh, sign up for the first year trips. The first year trips are divided into a lot of sections. So international students, uh, in our year, international students sign up for section B and C because they have to be on campus for international orientation as well. So I landed on campus on August 22nd, late evening. So a, lot, a bunch of international students uh, greeted us on campus and then they took me to my dorm. I slept there. The next day, I got to meet my trippies and I got to see what first trips was like. So first trips is all about dancing and singing and colors and everything. Everything that is like kind of Dartmouth thing. So you, you can see there the, the building behind the people who are dancing is called Logo. Uh, it's the official DOC house. DOC is the Dartmouth Audio Club. And that is the organization that kind of runs the first three trips. So there are these upperclassmen just singing and dancing and welcoming everyone. So after uh, everyone gets together, you go in a pile like that on the fourth photo. And they just get you together, uh, help you meet the other trip members of your group. And then you basically start dancing and doing all of these things, right? And then you get some set talks about what to do in the wild, because you are in the wild for five days. So how to take care of yourself, how to go to the toilet, for example, right? So do all of these things, and then you basically start going to your own hikes. So these are some of the groups that, not my groups, but I just pull them out of the engine. So some people go for hiking, obviously, I mean, I already said that before. So my trip was cabin camping. So I didn't do a lot of hiking, but uh, because of, it was cabin camping, we stayed in a bus. So Dartmouth owns a lot of small, like, hearts, wooden hearts kind of things all over New Hampshire. And you have uh, those hearts on like, on mountain bases. They call them mountains. They are small, but like, they have snow and those kind of things. So, uh, you have a lot of laws, and my trip uh, stayed in a laws called Lawrence Cabin. Uh, so in that cabin, we ended up just going to short hikes around the cabin, and uh, just ended up talking a lot. So three, almost three days of just bonding with new people, right? So right after going from Nepal to the U.S., I ended up uh, having to meet U.S. students mostly. I was, oh, I was this. Okay, there was another international student there from Mexico. Otherwise, everyone else was a student, and my trip leader was a senior, and other trip leader was a co leader was a sophomore. So, we ended up just bonding and talking about the senior and the trip leaders told us about their uh, experiences. We shared our own stories about where we came from and why we are here and what made us, like, you know, choose Dartmouth and those kind of things. So, after the three day thing that you do with your group, Everyone gets up at this big laws called the uh, Ravin, Musulak Ravin Laws. So it is, uh, Mus Mount Musulak is the highest mountain on, in New Hampshire. It's not very high, it's like 3,000, 4,000 feet probably. And that's not even 2,000 meters, right? But it's the highest mountain in New Hampshire. And on the base there is a big Dartmouth Laws. And everyone gets together here after the end of the trips. Right? So every trip that went out to different places come together. And you basically stay here for uh, one and a half days long. And the laws is again about dancing and eating and doing all those kind of things. So here, this is another photo of the laws. So the laws is like open throughout the year, except for the winter maybe. And it has like a lot of hikers coming in, not just Latin students, right? A lot of hikers coming in, a lot of parties and those kind of things. But uh, this is one of the pictures that is not really off the trips, but you can imagine. There will be, be a lot of tables here, 
and we will be just dancing around and singing and dancing again this kind of thing. So, and you also get introduced to a lot of Dartmouth things. So one of the things uh, that Dartmouth is famous for is Dr. Seuss. Uh, he is a famous uh, student writer, author, right? And he's read a lot of stories and he's the famous Dartmouth son. And one of his books, uh, Green Eggs and Ham, there's a book called Green Eggs and Ham. I didn't know about Dr. Seuss before I, it, all it, before I uh, participated in the first interview. So green eggs and ham, you basically, one night, you basically just green eggs and ham. So you get introduced to this Dartmouth experience. It's not just bonding with each other and making a strong community at Dartmouth, but also about what Dartmouth means and what stories Dartmouth has, right? So uh, one night, the same night at the laws, uh, you sit around in the big lawn in front of the laws, and then one of the upperclassmen just stands up and tells you these horror stories about non Musalog and what happened there before. So this is basically about introducing you to Dharma. So it was a very easy transition for me from Nepal here to college because there was this five year, five day, six day trips, then three, four days international orientation and then again some more days of regular orientation and then classes started. So it was a very smooth transition and I was able to make friends before I started classes. Right? So the first year trips basically becomes everyone's like conversation starter. So the first thing you ask someone uh, you see, like someone new you see is, what trip did you go on? What section did you go on? Like, right? So that becomes everyone's conversation starter. It's a way of making new friends again. Like it's a way to start conversations. And first year trips also builds this tight knit community in, in Dartmouth because Dartmouth is all about I don't know. If, uh, among all the ideas, there's this rumor that Dartmouth is more community centered and those kind of things. And uh, you obviously build good relations with upper class, not just at trip leaders, but all the other people who are involved in the church. Because there are a lot of people on campus who are just dancing and introducing you to different kinds of uh, safety talks and those kind of things. There are trip leaders and then there are people who are doing the cooking for the laws and those kind of things. Right? And then your first friends are trip leaders. The people who are involved in the trips are called trip leaders and then there are the trip leaders. So the, they become your first friends at that. So how the trips define my first day? So going through this experience, which was a random choice, right? I just decided to participate in the trip because it sounded fun. So how did that define my first year experience? So because of the trips, I got in, uh, I got to know more about the Dartmouth Outing Club. I got to meet a lot of people who are involved in the Dartmouth like Dartmouth Outing Club. And basically, I got to know about this uh, club within the Dartmouth Outing Club called the Cabinet Trail. So this is the Cabinet Trail this year. Uh, it is a small club within the Dart Dart GOC and uh, it basically runs hikes and those kind of things uh, during weekends and sometimes during weekdays. So you meet every Monday at 10 and then decide on trips uh, and then you sign up for trips and you go on trips during the weekend while the trip classes are running. So I basically ended up doing that in the fall. So that was runs on a quarter system with the four quarters fall winter, spring and summer. So you take I every freshman has to take three first three terms, right? And Dartmouth has this weird thing called deep plan, so you can choose to take the fall off. So if I choose, I can not go on, on campus on the, in the fall. But there are some visa related issues uh, with international students, but everyone can just like pick terms and study whatever they want. So there are classes during summer as well. So uh, what was I saying? So basically I ended up uh, going to a lot of hikes during the weekends. That became my thing because I got it's easy to just get lost in the world. But it's so fast, it's just 10 weeks of classes, right? So you take three courses and those three courses are basically that the courses that people learn in a semester class. So a six month long course is squeezed into three month long course. And then in the second week there is there are midterms and finals and besides that you have a lot of papers to write. So it's very easy to get sucked into all of the world. Hiking and the cabin and trail thing became for me an opportunity to just like escape out of Dartmouth and then explore the communities around. Also, know more people, get to know more people, get to know more upperclassmen because those are the people that really help you define what you want to do in the future because they have taken the classes and the prof they know the professors and stuff. So I ended up going on a lot of hikes in the fall. Uh, I did not end up doing a lot in the winter term because there was a lot of work again. Uh, 
but I ended up uh, going on a big, long, six-day long hike again in the winter break. We had a long winter break, six-week long winter break, winter break after the winter term. So I went on a hike uh, in the last week of the winter term. And then in the spring term, I went on a couple of hikes. I actually co-led one hike. So I wanted to become a leader in this thing, right? And I'm in the process. And I co-led one hike. And in the spring break as well, after the winter term, sorry, after the fall term, there was the winter break. And after the winter term, there was the spring break. So in the spring break, I went another for like eight, nine days hike uh, in Tennessee. So I ended up doing all of these things because I went to the first two trips. And not everyone does this, but I ended up doing this and basically just told myself. Really. So this was this is one of the pictures that I draw in the fall. I don't know. Uh, swimming, Mount Mansfield, so there's and the highest mountain in Vermont or something like that. Uh, so this is a picture of me doing the 60 long winter hike. So it was almost 55 miles from Hanover to that big loss that I showed you before, that Mount was working. So you basically hike from from Canvas to that place over six days. Uh, so you stayed overnight in different cabins that are homes. You stayed overnight in one tent or in a tent one night. One day, one night was very, very cold, minus 20, minus 20 degrees Celsius. So when I ended up doing this thing as well, and I've never seen snow before coming to So basically, I ended up doing this thing as well. And that one is big and outdoorsy kind of stuff. There is a hike called the 50, the 50, which is basically the same route that we took in the winter hike. So from campus to Mount Musla, 55 miles, right? But you do that on a stretch, so without sleeping. So people end up doing that over the course of 20, 20 to 30 hours, straight without sleeping, right? And some people hallucinate and do those kind of things. And it's really hard to get into that uh, thing because it's a really well-organized kind of hike. So it's really hard to get into I tried getting into get, getting into that this spring, but obviously I could not because the seniors have priority. This kind of thing. But maybe I end up doing, end up doing that somewhere. This is a picture of the group that uh, did the spring break hike with me. So this is a group of this club. And the good thing about this club is that you don't need, need to be really involved in the club. You just can choose to do a business stuff. So we ended up breaking into groups and hike the Smoky Mountains. And this hike was especially really a nice experience because I got to know more of the US. So we ended up driving up almost 16, 18 hours up to Tennessee. And then we, which is like a bit up south. And we hiked for four or five days there, and then we went to the east again, nine hours drive to North Carolina, and we stayed in an island. And uh, it was a like, small island, but it was like kind of big too. And we, this is a picture of us like, getting firewood for a bonfire in it. So the trips and led me to this uh, experience of the, the cabin and chair thing. And I got to meet new people, explore the surrounding communities. And Dartmouth is like, the New Hampshire is very beautiful. There are a lot of hills. And the communities there are really old and handsome. And it has a very rich history. So you get to know more about that. You get to skip the Dartmouth bubble. It's a very famous term at Dartmouth. Because you get sucked into work and you can't go. You feel like you can't go anywhere because Dartmouth is so secluded. And you need to have a variable to go somewhere. Because the public transport is not that good. Or the public transport is just you're going to travel the country. I got to travel the country. So it was for me a way to better understand the US and the culture, and therefore the best way to get past the culture side. Because the only reason you have culture side is because you don't understand the culture. Right? So doing this was a way for me to understand the culture in the US. So let me talk about my academic experience. So Dartmouth is again like any other big institution. You have a lot of papers, assignments, and exams, and Minus the document time, which is very no time at all. And you, you end up doing online, which is basically going to the night, trying to finish your work or studying for your exams, and the next day you are basically lying flat. And this is a this is a simple. Uh, these are some of my friends. This is a piece that my friend just uploaded in Facebook a couple of weeks ago, and I am on the second floor. Of the and this is simply, I'm, I did not do a lot of online, but a lot of people end up doing online. But I had to do some reference. So it was again a new experience because here you basically just study for the final exams, right? One month before my A levels. So 
so there was this three years period of doing nothing for me, I mean going to garden and doing everything. So it was it was weird, but it ended up like the you really hate Dartmouth when you are going through your turn, right? Because it's ten weeks and you feel like you haven't learned anything because it's going so fast. And at the end of the turn, after you finish this, you feel like you have done so much and you feel good about yourself. So now I'm feeling good about myself, but when I go back again, it's kind of that it kind of again. But I'm going to talk about one class, specific class that uh, really defined my first year academic experience. It was called the Writing to International. Uh, at Dartmouth, everyone has to go through two writing courses, uh, either writing two, three, or five, or uh, and writing seminar. So you take writing two, three, or writing five before you take the writing seminar. And I ended up getting placed into choosing this course because I heard a lot of good things about this class. So writing two, three is a two-term course, so I ended up doing it in the fall and the winter. And it's called the international because it has only international students from all over the world. So we have 16 international students and a very awesome professor. And I'm just going to read some of the things. Uh, so this students, the class was very difficult because it was a lot of work. It's probably the it's probably going to be the hardest class that I ever I ever take a time in, in terms of, uh, of the amount of work I have to do. So everything, even though I was taking an honors physics class, which was supposed to be very difficult, I ended up spending more time on this because it was too much work, right? So because of this weird 18 kind of relationship, all of these people who are involved in the class become awesome friends because you go to the same kind of experience. So I was basically complaining about the work to some other friends, and someone else was also complaining about the work to some other friends, and you basically end up talking about the kind of work you have to do on this kind of thing. So you become good friends, and you have awesome conversations with the friends because you spend a lot of time with them. You have awesome conversations with the professor inside and outside of the class, in an office, sometimes I used to sit in an office for two or three hours to start the program, but not just like the things that we learned in class. Uh, so it ended up like going, so I'm talking about how my experience is kind of led to the whole first year experience, right? So the class experience led me to like, think about the kinds of questions we're reading in class and talk about those kind of things with other friends. So it ended up going to Dartmouth as well. And then now, like even in Nepal or somewhere else, outside Dartmouth, I'll be meeting strangers and talking about these big ideas that we were talking about in class. So it was an amazing uh, academic experience because we were talking about all of these different things, philosophy, religion, politics, history. So all of these big ideas and big questions, what is life, what is truth, right? What is capital truth and small truth, right? And those kind of things. And basically talking about Okay, how how is this room set up, and what argument is it making? Why are we trying to put users get inspired since like the poster here, right? This is somewhere else. So there are these things that uh, people think about when people put the sign for his here, for example. So we're basically studying these kind of things and thinking about these abstract ideas as well. So because of this, the class was very interesting for me at this. And so this defined my academic experience with everything revolving around the class for the first two terms. And again, in the third term, it was such an ex amazing experience that you, I was basically just being nostalgic about the class that I had in the last two terms in the spring term. So it was like, this, the spring term was just a way to just get past that amazing experience that I had. So basically, I learned to question everything about dark education, what, I, what education I was getting, what good things and bad things come out of dark right? what, what the social life of dark means. It's a big party school. We were studying hard and then partying hard over the weekend and those kind of things. So what things are good and what things are bad? It's, it has a very big fraternity system. So there are good things and bad things. And what are the bad things? What are the good things? You want to question everything. So this was an amazing experience for me. So let me talk about that back then. Uh, let me talk about some of the other experiences that I had. So I, I was part of this uh, program that I applied when I went to campus, this program called Great Seas Scholar. So I don't know how many students there were, but probably 40 or 50. So they had to write an application. And this, is, this program basically means that this, all of the students who get enrolled in the program get to meet uh, lecturers and people coming in from outside to talk to give lectures and those kind of things. And there are special lectures designed for you know, scholars, right? And, uh, and you get to know about, talk about, 
great issues being issues about relating to the world. So it's uh, talking about the environment or global warming, those kind of things, talking about what education means, and those, all of those different things. So great issues for that. So this is a mixture of all of the pieces. So every term, before the start of every term, we went to a retreat as part of the Genesis College program. And this is the first retreat that we had. So in this retreat, there was a talk. Uh, there was a woman who talked to us about how to make impact with, uh, how to make good impact with people in the developing area. She was especially talking about how she was working with women in Rwanda and what kind of experiences she had. So she was talking about how to build personal connections so that you can really know what the problems are instead of going with the pre-existing pre idea of what their problems are. Right? So in this lecture, we're talking about that. We're talking about personal connections, making, again, being having good friends again. So here are like, a lot of people that I know have done great things outside of Dharma, before coming into Dharma, like, and back to the So again, this was a great experience because you got to go to all different, just different talks, so you get you know, uh, intellectually excited, and also make good friends. Uh, one other treat, treat that I went to, before the winter term, yeah. so before the winter term, the another retreat was uh, North Korea crisis, war crisis simulation, Mediterranean crisis simulation. So it was basically a simulation of uh, an expected humanitarian crisis in North Korea, right? So how would these big countries like Japan, uh, US, uh, big countries like South Korea, and those countries, right? Uh, how would they deal with a big humanitarian crisis in North Korea with the uh, nuclear missiles and those kind of things in North Korea now, right? So we're talking about that. I was part of the Japan team. And while the first retreat was about personal connections, this was about women's strategy, not looking at persons at all, because we're not looking at humanitarian issues, although it's, it was about humanitarian issues, right? We're looking, about, looking at how to make uh, best possible deals for your own country, how not to like, spend a lot of money for your own country and make other people pay for the humanitarian crisis and this kind of thing. So it was like, a very good experience. You get to meet a lot of influential people from all over the world. Um, I don't remember the names, but I know that I have met a lot of people that you only hear about in TV and like, you know, this kind of things. Another experience for me was uh, enrolling in the Friends and Family program. So uh, when I went to Dartmouth, I think in the first couple of weeks you got to apply for, a, before going to Dartmouth, you got to apply for a Friends and Family program. So you get paired with a family around campus, somewhere near campus. So I was paired with, um, uh, paired with uh, a single lady, old lady, uh, living in Burma, which is the neighboring state. Um, it was a very nice experience because you, it was an easy transition for me, but still like knowing a person, a real person, and going to like family dinners and going to the things that usual, like US citizens do, right? It was a big learning experience for me, uh, for learning about the US culture, learning about the US lifestyle in the East at least. And I, got, I did a lot of weird things as well, like I went to uh, churches, right, and I, I sang like Christmas songs and random songs, and I went to a lot of different things because I was just going with her. And I was at a small uh, She also came to Nepal, I think, the summer before, and she was doing this, like, she's also big on hiking and those kind of things, and I was, and, uh, so we went on a small hike together too. So it was very nice. And she was kind of a support uh, to me. I went with her to neighboring, to somewhere uh, headquarters of New Hampshire, Bangor, to get my social security number and those kind of things. So it was very helpful. And I know that some of the other, some of my other friends who have had uh, friends and families, they have been really helpful, like helping them doing emergency medical uh, things, right? So helping them sort out the insurance stuff. And apart from great issues, because there were a lot of lectures on campus, there were a lot of lectures that everyone can attend. Right? So I went to a lot of them, uh, trying to, like, even the weirdest topics, you, you never think about going to. Talking about women issues, although like I would imagine myself going to women issues. But there are a lot of different things, a lot of different uh, kind of activities that people do that they talk about those. I went to a lot of those. I also went to the Hopkins Center, is the art center at Dartmouth. 
and I, uh, it has like shows every weekend, sometimes during the weekends. I went to a lot of shows, uh, performances, orchestras, there are a lot of people, famous people coming in from, there were a lot of famous people coming in from all over the world to down to like, perform. Uh, and because it was the 15th anniversary of the Hopkins Center, it was a big thing. Uh, so I was kind of proud. And the drama I was staying in provided free tickets to some of the events. So I utilized that and I went to one of the So learning about music, jazz music, you know, like the things that make America, America, uh, was a very good experience for me. Yeah. So I'm going to be more with this inspired thing. So the thing to remember, I guess, is being open-minded and try out new things. Right? So I tried out the 50-mile bridge hike without having experienced snow. Snow was, the first experience of snow was on campus and it's very available. So I tried new things and I, get to, I got to make new friends, learn a lot of stuff. Uh, trying to push me in your comfort zone but not really be uncomfortable with what you're doing. So sometimes people just say that you, know, you have to try new things and just end up hurting themselves. So sometimes you have to be careful that sometimes, most of the times you don't know what to expect. Right? So you can't be just fruitful to get things from the course and recognize that okay, oh, this is a little bit too much for me so I can get out of it and still understand it in a better way, right? So sometimes it's always good to move in the flow. Um, an example I would use all the classes that I took, I did not know what to expect. So I just ended up taking physics, 16 years of the honors course and physics mechanics course. And with that I had to take a math course and with that I had to take a writing 2 three course. But most of, the, most of the course selection that I had was just random course selection just because I thought the topics sounded interesting or something like that. And they turned out to be great experiences for me. Uh, so because this is about discovering yourself, most importantly our discovering yourself is an ongoing process. So what happened in my first year experience, like the hiking thing, uh, all the academic experiences, all the things that I have learned uh, will define what I do in the upcoming years at Dartmouth. But those are not the only things that I will do, right? Because there will be a lot of new opportunities coming by. So I'll try to do whatever the things that I've been doing. So I'll, I guess I'll be more ready to recognize these weird looking opportunities and get the best possible experience that I can. So an, an example that I put is, I just applied randomly to this uh, War and Peace Fellows program. Because uh, remember the North, uh, North Korea crisis in recent thinking that I was talking to you about? There was this prof, uh, Darren, Professor Darren Press, uh, who was Really, who gave a really awesome talk to us. So I was having dinner with him and a couple of other students uh, during the retreat. And we were talking about a lot of things and I got to know that he was he was basically the head of this war and peace fellows program. So these are this this program I think I don't know not a lot of the details about it, but uh, it selects students, I think there are sixteen students now. I got to the end of this program and something here. The sixteen students now you uh, basically invite people from everywhere like, to give talks and lectures. You go to Washington DC, meet senators and all you know, the influential people in the US. So like I I never I never I thought that I would have done this when I was here. But I because of my past experience of the why not, right? So I'll be a part of that program. So I guess I'll leave the floor to persons now. Anything about God but anything about my future experience. Okay. Let's <coughs> <clears throat> yes. So it's it's really weird. Even when I was trying trying to make this presentation, it was kind of difficult to like pinpoint what my experience was because everything kind of blurs into one experience, right? So <coughs> I just remember the first day I came to campus and I met the South African international student and we went to the dorm together. He was living in a building nearby. I remember that. And after finishing three terms, I I remember just that, right? Because everything just kind of jumbles into one experience. So the best experience, I don't know. Uh, if I had to give an answer, maybe the right to do these things. Someone else? Yeah. Can you tell something about fraternity experience? Fraternity experience? So uh, freshmen are not allowed to be involved in flats. I don't. So if I want to be involved in flat, I, I'll be doing that in my sophomore year. So, down this big and fat culture, there are a lot of things to do in Hanover, which is the town, and in Dartmouth is, right? 
and all other things. So a lot of people end up going to fries, and you don't have to be a drinker. Only 50% students drink, I think. So uh, there's a lot of partying, dance parties, and those kind of things. Fries are also has are also the social side of uh, making the community better. So they do a lot of things, and then they also do that crazy thing, right? So I don't know. I've I've been to several fraternities uh, to see how it was. I don't know if I'll be if I want to be involved in fact. But I I, I do things randomly, so I don't want to decide anything. I'm sorry about that. Did you on campus that allows the experience? you don't have to stand on class. Uh, I did but the first the first round, I I tutored a student. So it was funny because the one of my tutors from Mexico, see, they are all smart, right? But some of the people have not taken math before. So I tutored her. Uh, it was not a lot of time commitment, and I, also in my physics class, I think someone broke his hand or something. So there is this accessibility center, and I wrote. Notes. I never write notes from now on, but I understand I, you know, I don't have a job, so I don't do it. And they pay me well now. So I wrote notes. So in the fall term, that was it. In the winter term and the spring term, I ended up working in, as an IT consultant uh, at Green Core. So I didn't have a lot of work to do. So I was kind of like looking at people and helping them whenever there was a problem or there was something doing a lot of things. But it was a good, it has been a good experience, I guess. Like, for me, it's like, Doing just one thing is not my thing, so I can't just study or I can't just do my thing. But I can't just talk with people. Right? I need to do a lot of different things. At least that's what I think. And so I try to get involved in a lot of jobs. So not a lot of people do work at Darwin because of the uh, amount of work you have to do for classes and for the different activities you are involved in. But I ended up working quite a few hours. So it was good. How much you paid? Paid? Yes. Uh, tutoring, maybe eight, eight dollars an hour, nine dollars an hour. Uh, notes, not much, seven dollars an hour. My ID consultant job is a big one. It's two dollars an hour. Two dollars an hour. Yeah. But the minimum pay I got is seven cents per hour. And who knows? Can you tell something about your preparations? You get getting into that one. Specific, but, but specific. Like, uh, how do you prepare uh, your schools? You go for SAGs in the schools? How do you prepare your practice, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a lot of a practice. You never know. Like, I, I did not know that I was going to get into Dartmouth. Right? Because Dartmouth was one of the colleges that I just applied to, without knowing what Dartmouth was. So, to see how it works. Like, you work really hard for some of the colleges, and you end up applying to some other colleges. You get rejected by the college that you really want to go to, and then you accept, and get accepted by Dharma. In my case, so I don't know how I got into Dharma, but I would say like the best thing to do, you know, being an institution like Dharma, everyone has high scores. So my score was probably one of the lowest scores at Dharma when I got in. But it's not just about scores. So it's a lot about how you present yourself. That it's not just about application essays too. Application essays play a very good role. But it's also about how you portray yourself, right? So what makes you you and the way you portray yourself, the kind of language you use and those kind of things play a part in the admission of his mind, I guess. But I, I can't say much. Like for concerning SATs and those kind of things, I would say practice. I used to come to USF a lot. I was part of the almost really funny program. So I used to come here. There was basically nothing to do in the gap year. So I finished a lot of practice tests. That, that was it. I think aspirations are more. Sorry? I think aspirations. I think? Writing, writing. Writing experience. Oh, writing has been awesome. Like, I thought I always liked writing, but I, I now know that I like the idea of writing, but not writing that much. <laughs> but uh, my writing to three class was all about writing, obviously. Right? So we wrote a lot of interesting papers. And I got good reviews to I had two writing classes in the spring term. I took four classes instead of three. And two of them were writing classes. And I had really good reviews from both professors. So and writing has been 
so in my writing class, it was not about teaching you how to write, but teaching you how to think. And writing is about how you put your thoughts in there. Right? So that was the, the hardest part for me during the writing tutorial experience was thinking. Because that takes a lot of time. So you have a week to write a paper, research paper, you have to read a lot of things. You have to find an interest first, you have to find a topic within that interest, and then you have to research a lot on that topic, and then think about what you want to write, right, and end up writing it. So writing is not that difficult, but thinking and putting your thoughts on paper is difficult. So how many days do you have to study for a day? How many days do you have to study for a day? Hmm? Uh, I, I don't really know, but it's, it's usually a lot. In my writing class, I know at Princeton people read a lot, 200, 300 pages, but it, it depends on the course you are taking. If I was taking Humanities 1 and 2, I would probably be finishing a book a week, like this level book a week. But I was doing this probably 80, 70, 80, it depends on the classes, I think. You have a question back there? Yeah, I read something about examinations and your book. Examinations? That's also hard to define what is theory for practical. But it's so I think education in general in the US is all about uh, what you go through. It's a process, right? So it's not just like writing everything you in the final exam. So it's a lot about homeworks, and that takes a lot of time. And because of that, you have to do a lot of online. Otherwise, you can go through nine weeks without doing anything and then study for a week. Right? But you can't do that around because you have to do a lot of work before. So for my physics, 16, 15, and 24 that I took this spring. There were like 15, 20 hours of just homeworks. And it, there's a big honor course, and nobody cheats. And in the exam, basically, in my last class, physics class, it was an open book exam, but it was the hardest exam I've given. So it's a lot about thinking. Obviously, it's a lot about thinking. It's not just like reading and memorizing and writing. That's what it asks me. Anyone else? Yeah, I, they turned out to be famous. Like I did not know about them. <laughs> but I, as I told, like all of the talks that I went to, they were really influential people all in the world, and you get to meet these influential people. But I don't know them. Like, there, there are some names I know, but obviously I did not know them when I was here. Your friends in the uh, how how were they like lavish or study oriented? What type of people? Like everyone studies, everyone studies, and everyone like it's 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 also a personal thing. Like I do not do as much studying as most people probably do, but uh, my classes were different, right? So my classes were more about math and physics and writing, and which is also a lot about thinking. But there are courses which require you just like kill yourself with work, and so it depends on the client kinds of classes we're taking. Sometimes people take a really hard class one for. Out of the three classes, there is usually one very hard class, one medium kind of class in the writing kind of test, so that you don't have final exams. And then one kind of easy class but an interesting one. You know, there are classes for rhetoric, so public speaking classes, uh, African drumming classes, and those kind of things. So people try to balance things out. And people do not just study, but they do a lot of other cool things, like get involved with a lot of activities. They, people are involved in a lot of uh, Social clubs and those kind of things. So it's not just studying, but that's also a very difficult question to answer. What is the biggest challenge in Challenge. Biggest challenge. That's actually. Uh, I guess like when I went in, obviously everyone has a scare. Everyone, even in the US, has this scare. Okay, I'm in a big institution now. How is the academics going to be like? So getting past that fear was the biggest challenge, I guess. Not the biggest, but because. This is the challenge that I didn't know this. Anyone else? How did you get this all as I did? How? I applied and I got into it. What did you do? I mean, I'm, oh, I'm fairly okay with computers and stuff. And I've been involved in a lot of things here. Not just programming. It's not about programming. It's about like, finding out problems. So, I guess like, as a child I was into that kind of stuff. And I just applied, I, I did not know what ID budget had meant, but I applied anyways. And then I got an interview and we were talking about what kind of things I knew. 
and it's not a big thing. Like it's not about you know fixing computers because apparently there's a computer services that I've noticed, so I don't have to fix them. I just have to find the problem and then just try to solve it if it's a small problem and record it or like file it and give it to the other guys. And obviously if you fix a computer, it's not gonna break down that easily. Right? So it's not a very big kind of job. Yeah. Um, compared to the Air Columbia and Gordon, uh, what is the risk to your product? Well, I did not get that. Uh, compared to the Air Columbia and Gordon or any other university, uh, I did. What is the best thing about the top university? Best thing about it? Um, I don't know what year is like or what the colleges are like, but what I hear from <coughs> like talking with my roommate and other people, what I hear is that Dartmouth is a lot more like it's it's ranked high in the undergraduate teaching because the teaching is really good and it's focused on undergraduate program. Well. There are some graduate schools and there are some graduate programs, but it's focused on undergraduate programs. So I think personally, what I feel is you get uh, you get to uh, be involved with research easily. You get a lot of research grants easily, easier than other colleges, big ones, if they are science schools. But I'm guessing I might be a lot harder because everyone is involved in science. Uh, academics wise, it's I think it's as competitive as any other college. It's as difficult or as easy, whatever that is. Yeah. What was the uh, attitude of like uh, American people towards international students? Uh, like they are as uh, new to some other people from other states in the US. So if I'm from New Hampshire and I'm meeting someone from Texas, for example, I would probably have the same kind of reaction to a uh, student from outside US, right? It's, it's a little bit more. They probably ask, you know, ways. sometimes you have people who don't know where the bar is, but then you say, oh, it's there. Oh, yeah, I've been from now. Because nobody studies about now. But uh, a lot of times, obviously, it's, it's very good reaction. People are very friendly in the US, surprisingly, right? <laughs> very friendly, especially in the East Coast. And I hear it's different in the South and in the South of the US, but I don't know much. In the West and the East. And like everyone at Dartmouth is so happy. Like you you that's why it's called the Dartmouth Bubble Week, because everyone is so happy and like working and crying and laughing at the same time. It feels like you want to So that you have to sometimes come out of it. And there are activities that you can do to get out of the dark and right? So, I don't know. Any other question? Uh, books are pretty expensive there, so how do you manage them? Uh, you have to buy them? I didn't have to buy much. Dar like, Dartmouth is part of the Ivy League, right? So, and every Ivy League institution gets to borrow books from like, all the Ivy League institutions, and MIT, and probably Stanford too. So, I get to so if I don't really have, if um, the library doesn't have books, if our own library doesn't have books, I usually just search for books uh, and borrow, that's called borrow direct. So I, I know for a fact that in the last term, the spring term, I had three or four books from MIT that I was using. And you can return those books. So the, you just order a book, then you get it in two days. So it's, it's, it's not that big of a deal, but sometimes you won't have books, you have to buy books. And because of the work I was doing, I had some money to buy some of the books that I wanted, or I had to buy. And professors are really okay with like I have three books now with me here at Nepal. Like there are professors just lend it to me to just study. So you can even ask professors if it's very hard for you. Any other person? Were there other Nepalese students? There were. Quite they, they, how did they? Hmm? How did they? How did they help you? Oh, I did not know there were any like a lot of English students. So I got in, and then I came to know before I went to Garden that there was another girl, another 16, right? It was a class of my class. And when I went to Garden, I got to know there was a 15, which was a sophomore, now a junior. And I got to know later on, like in the end of the fall, from that there was a senior who just graduated. So I did not know that there were a lot of English students. And there are about some three or four students who transfer in from Colby and Williams and those kind of colleges to do 3D engineering program at Dartmouth. So and I 
people say that there are two students in the Dartmouth Medical School, uh, Nepalese students, but I haven't met them. But there are two Nepalese professors and I haven't met them. Uh, I don't know. One is in the English department, I think. One is in the geography department, and the guy from in the geography department is a new one. So he just came there. But yeah, there are these a fair number of people. Is there engineering for an app like Dartmouth? Yeah. Engineering for them? Uh, so Dartmouth has an engineering school called the Air School. And everyone first gets a BS degree, a BA degree in engineering sciences. So everyone at Dartmouth gets a bachelor's in arts degree. So if I do a physics degree, I'll get a bachelor's in arts and physics or something like that. And if you want to get a professional engineering degree, you do an extra year of engineering with the Air School. So, yeah, it has been engineering. It is a fairly old one. How many years are going to be three or four? It's four. And if you want to get a B, it's five. But we will squeeze five years into four years. Mostly because they don't want to be extra. Can we have engineering courses in the I haven't yet. I will not go engineering courses. So I'm not really sure. But you can, like, obviously find it in the internet. It's, it's very easy to find. Just type down dark courses or engineering courses. Alright, so last questions for the phone. Alright, last questions. Anything about my experience and yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. one reason you said uh, we'll get to you and then take and if you have vegetables in that point. There are vegetable stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just like it's I want, I was trying to say that they the the first year course is more about getting you to know about dark uh, culture and those kind of things. So green ham and eggs because of Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss is a very famous dark guy. And I don't think I... It was weird. Like I saw green eggs. So obviously I didn't eat much. But this this weird thing. Like it's probably not ham as well. I think it was mostly vegetarian, but it's just called green eggs and ham or something like that. But there are a lot of vegetarian sources. Any final question? Um, how is the food? Food? <laughs> food is one thing that I didn't like in the US. That's why you see me. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of food choices. I eat a lot of like vegetables, something things that are not cooked. Uh, but like uh, restaurants are pretty good. I try to go to restaurants if I can. But there are a lot of food choices. And sometimes you don't even have time to eat, so you just eat whatever you can. You know, just find something and just eat it. Because you don't have a lot of time to think about what you want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> food, is, food is good. Apparently, it's one of the good colleges in terms of food. But, but, but I'm not uh, fond of it. Okay, maybe one final question. Yeah, or do you have some final thoughts to share, Colin, or any message you'd like to I guess like for people who how many people are applying now like are in the process of application right now? Yes. And yeah. So are there any people who are going to US colleges this year? So maybe for people who are going to the US this year. Like something to think about is not be that scared of academics there or something like that. It can be difficult, it is difficult. Like I had a lot of friends who were depressed because of the academics, US friends and those people who were probably smarter than I was. So it's it's a lot more about you know mixing everything, trying to do what you think you want to do and trying to do things that are new and trying to balance academics with everything else. So that is one thing I would say to anyone who is going to US this year. And for people who are applying, I would say like, practice a lot, bring, do as much as you can, and you never know which college accepts you, because it's a very random, not random, but you have to work hard, you have to make sure that you are among the top students, you know, in the application pool, and try to get to know a lot about the colleges, that's one thing that I did not do. I did not know anything about Dartmouth when I applied. I ended up applying to it, you know, because you just do random things. But it, it would have been a lot better if you know the colors, then you can write a better application. So if I knew that I was all about you know, our closest stuff and this, this
this awesome class and this kind of environment, then I'd probably have applied EDV or something like that. Or I'd probably have written a different application. So, yeah, that's one thing. Okay, I guess that's it.